When you're asked to express the domain and range of an algebraic expression, basically, um, they're asking, are there any limits on what x could be in an equation? And in this first polynomial, since there's no fractions and no radicals, the domain is all real numbers. All real numbers. And the range, if this was an equation y equals, then what could the y be if any real number could put, be put in there? And if real numbers can be put in here, then the answer is also going to be all real numbers. So the domain and range are both all real numbers. Now, let's look at the radical expression, though. Underneath the radical, this part here, the x minus 2, if I'm going to be able to get a value for what's inside that radical, it has to be positive or 0. So if I put a 2 in there, 2 minus 2 is 0. If you take your calculator and try to get the square root of 0, you'll get 0 for the answer. If I put a negative in here, negative, suppose I put a 1, let's just say 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So the answer to that is square root negative 1. Try that on your calculator. It doesn't work. You'll get an error. So what goes in this radical, the x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And then if you solve that, you get x is greater than or equal to 2. So the domain of this radical expression is um, all the numbers where x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so you can't say all reals, but you can say all reals where x is greater than or equal to 2. Now, when you get to fractional expressions, it's a little bit different because you have to deal with the bottom of the fraction. And knowing what you know about fractions, the bottom of the fraction can be anything but 0. Can it be 0? And if you try any fraction again on your calculator, you'll get an error. So, the bottom can't be 0. All right? Now, so basically, to find an expression for the domain of a fraction, what you do is you take x plus 1, and you set it equal to 0, and solve it, and you get x equals negative 1. So the domain of the fraction is x not equal to negative 1. Basically, that's a shortcut for saying all real numbers except negative 1. Negative 1 gives you a 0 in the bottom. A 0 in the bottom makes it undefined. Now, in terms of the top, the top can be 0. So the top of the fraction can be anything you want. Now, sometimes an expression wants to know what are the zeros of an expression. And if the zeros are, so when you're doing domain, domain you always do the bottom. Okay, you always do the bottom of a fraction. If you want the zeros of the fraction, the top of a fraction can be zero, and the bottom can be anything. So what would make this fraction zero? When the top equals zero. So the zeros of an expression, you take the top equal to zero and solve it. So let's take the top, 2x minus 1 equal to zero and solve that. 2x equals 1, x equals a half, you know how to do that. So the zeros for this particular expression are x equals a half. <clears throat> when I put a half in there, I get a zero in the top, and I get a zero. And you can get a zero for an answer. You can plot a zero on a graph. You can't plot an undefined on a graph. So, um, so domain range and zeros... Um, if you're talking fractions, uh, what, what, what can give you a zero in the fraction? Again, to get a zero in this, I need a two, but two, zero is okay on that. So with fractions, you have to be careful of the bottom because you have some exclusions or some values that won't work in the equation. So good luck with domain range and zeros of algebraic expressions.